Welcome to this, the sixth of the Povre tutorials. Now I've rendered the scene, which is a new one to us. You can see that I've created a donut shape. That's technically called a torus within Povre. There are two parameters that go into the torus shape. The first number here indicates how wide or how big that circle is going to be. And the second number here, this 0 0.3, is how thick it's going to be. So it's how thick a donut you're going to have. So let me just change this number from 2.1 up to 4.1. And you can see that now the, the donut is much wider. If I change it from 0.3 thickness to 1.3 thickness, you can see how it's a large fat donut now. Let me just put that back. So you have a, a donut there, but I can also do this. I can rotate it. around the green bar, which is the x-axis. Let me just rotate that 90 degrees, stand it up effectively. There you go. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can scale a shape. Now, I've shown you rotation, I've showed you translation, which moves it around, and rotation, which spins it on the spot. Scale actually changes the size of it. If I put a scale of 1, I'm saying basically make this shape the same size as it is now. But if I change it to 2, I'm saying multiply its size by 2. Let me run that. And now you can see the ring is both bigger and thicker because I've multiplied everything about that shape by 2. Let me change it to 0.5 so it should be half the size that it was during the original run. There you go, and now it's much smaller. But as well as providing scale with just a single number, you can also give it a 3D vector. Oop. So let me put 111 in. What I've said there is in the X, Y and Z dimensions, make it one size. But you can change any one of these vectors individually. The middle one being Y is up and down. If I change this to a 2, and run it, suddenly you can see how that shape has been stretched. It's now twice as tall as it was, but it's still the same depth and it's still the same width. And again, you don't just have to make the numbers bigger, you can make it smaller in one dimension. So if I make it half the size, it becomes a squished donut. But there's another thing you can do as well. I'll make it go forward, stretch it forwards and backwards. That doesn't really show it enough, but let me make that up to four. No, no, let's go mad. Let's make it ten. And now I've taken that donut shape and stretched it, stretched it into a tube almost. It's a curved edge of a tube. And we're going to use that during this scene because um, I'm going to build this up and make an approximation of a jet engine shape. But first of all, let me get rid of the... Uh, green, yellow and red bars by commenting out this include statement at the top because they're going to get in the way. There you go. Now we've just got our tube. The next step is um, to show you another new shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is comment out this torus. And the next shape I'm going to show you is a triangle, which is a rather special shape within Povre. A triangle is only two-dimensional. It has no depth, it's not solid, it's just a flat surface. Hence making it rather strange. Now I'm just going to cheat now and copy the values for this from Notepad where I've got them defined already. And I'm going to take the texture from here Cut and paste that in there. And if I run this, you can see I've literally created a triangle. A triangle has three points. That's true in mathematics. It's true when you're drawing a triangle. And it's true when you're drawing one with Povre. But each of those points is a three-dimensional vector in space. So you can see here at the origin, 0, 0, 0, that's going to be our bottom point of the triangle. 
The next point on the triangle, again, all I've done is pick a point which is up two spaces, and that would become the top left of the triangle. For the third point on the triangle, I've made it move across one space and up two spaces, and that becomes our third point on the triangle. Now, if I rotate this triangle to uh, demonstrate that it's 2D rather than a 3D object, so if I rotate it around the upright by 90 degrees, uh, you can see it's gone very thin. Now, we're slightly offset from zero ourselves, because the camera is at position two. But if I move the camera back on the zero of the uh, z-axis, x-axis, you can see that triangle's now completely disappeared. And the reason it's disappeared is because we're looking at it edge on, and a triangle is only two dimensions. So let me put the camera back where it was. You can just see it slightly from the side now. And let me take that rotation and change that back to zero, so it's not rotated. And there you go, you can see it from the side now, it, that it is completely just flat. And if you turn it sideways, there's nothing there. Right, the next thing I want to show you is a bit of programming. If you're a programmer by trade or hobby, if you've ever written anything in, I don't know, Microsoft's .NET languages or JavaScript, or even C++, this, what I'm about to explain, will be very familiar. But if, you're, if you haven't done any of that, please pay attention because it might be a bit strange. Now, what I want to do, if we're going to have a jet engine, this triangle is going to become one of the fan blades of that jet engine. But of course, a jet engine has many blades. So I'm going to create many triangles. Now, I, I could, before I show you the new stuff, I could create another fan blade if you like, by copying that triangle, and if I render that, you can see there's another triangle there. And I could keep on doing that, like this. Run it again. Oh, I didn't rotate it anymore. Let's rotate that last one. There you go. So I've got three fan blades now. And I could carry on cutting and pasting that triangle command until I've got all the fan blades I need. But Povray gives us a better way of doing that sort of thing. So I'm going to delete these. I'm also going to put this triangle onto a single line first. It's not something I normally like to do, but I need to save space on the screen in this instance. Right. OK, so I've now got a triangle on one line. And I'm going to use a declare statement. Basically, I've now declared I which is just a, a name, as a place where I can store a value. This is commonly known in programming terms as a variable. It doesn't have to be called I, it could be called pants or vest or banana, whatever you want to call it. You can have any number of variables as well. Right, the next command, again, is another new one. It's a while statement, again familiar to programmers. Let me just indent that triangle, put an end to the while. I'll explain these after I've finished typing them. Right, so let me go back up to this top line. So I'm saying I want a variable called i, and I'm going to store a value in it of 0. This equals means you're setting this variable to be the value that's on the right-hand side of it. The semicolon here is a convention saying that is the end of the declaration. The next command is a while, and that basically means that the, the following bit of code, Povray SDL language, is going to be repeated. And in this case, I'm saying as long as the value of i is less than 360, keep repeating this loop. Keep repeating over and over the code that's between this while statement and this end statement. Now you can see, once it comes inside this while, we've got our triangle. Just bring that over a bit. Then after that, I've got another declare statement. But I'm referencing that value i again. And I'm saying that i is now going to equal whatever i is at the moment, plus another 25. Now, 
that doesn't give us anything at the moment until I make use of that value of i, which I can do here. In this rotate statement, if I put i here instead of a value, whatever i is when it goes past this triangle, that i will be used to rotate that triangle. So effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going round this section here, incrementing the value of i by 25 each time until it gets up to 360. And as it goes through there each time it's going to produce a new triangle that's going to be rotated by the value of i. Let me run that and see whether I got it right. There you go, we've got a whole series of triangles now and they actually form a nice saw blade shape. But there's something else we can do here as well. It that doesn't look very much like fan blades at the moment because they're all flat in the same plane together. So what I need to do is put another rotate statement in here. And remember, you can have any number of rotate statements one after the other. But this first one is simply going to rotate the triangle around the upright axis by 20 degrees. Basically, that'll turn them so that they're not all flat. And this second one, as you've already seen, rotates it around making the saw blade shape. Let's run that. There you go, that looks much more like a series of fan blades now, doesn't it? Now, if you've ever looked at a jet engine, you usually notice that there's a hub in the middle of it that all the fan blades join into. Well, we're going to create that now. Let me comment this out for the moment so it doesn't get too confusing. And create a new shape. This is one we've seen before. A simple sphere. Give it a size of 1. And of course let's give it a texture so we can actually see it. Okay, let's just run that. Now that's too big compared to what we were looking at, so let me shrink that down by about half. So I'll say only 0.5. There you go. But I also want to make it slightly more pointed as well, and I'm going to use that scale command to do that once more. But this time I want the forwards and backwards dimension expanded, so I'll double that. So it becomes slightly more bullet shaped. Now, if I uncomment those triangles and run it, there you go. We've kind of got our hub, but it's sticking out a little too far for my liking. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use the translate statement to move that ball into the distance, that sphere, into the distance slightly. So if I put 0.5, let's see what that does. That's about right. That doesn't look so big and out of shape. But now, let's bring our torus back in as well. Now, this was the outer shell of the jet engine. There you go. Now, obviously, our fan blades are too far into the tunnel, as it were. So I need to bring them forwards. Now, I could use translate to move each of those fans. So I could go into here on the triangle and put a translate in here. and bring each of those fan blades forwards. But basically that means I've got to do that for every triangle and I'd also have to do the same for the ball up here. I'd need to put a translate that brings that forward as well. So I'm writing a lot of code to do each of those translations. But there is in fact a better way of doing that. There's another command you haven't seen before and this is called union. This doesn't actually create a shape. What this does is wraps around other shapes. So here you can see I've got the start of the union statement and here's the end of it. And what I'm telling Povray to do here is to include everything that's inside as one object as this union. So what I can do now, because that's effectively now one object, or those shapes are one object, I can put a translate statement here inside the union that affects everything that is a part of that union. So if I bring things forwards by minus one, that's towards the camera. OK, they're emerging into the light a bit more. A little bit more, I think. 
wonder if it's three. Oh, I've gone too far. 2.5, perhaps? Yeah, there we go. Also, I think I've rotated the fan blades a little too much because we can see through them and you generally can't see through a jet engine. So let's change that from 20 to 15. There you go. That's looking a little bit better. But now, because I can um, now use a union statement to join everything together, I can include this torus as well. I can put a union around everything we've created here to make the whole engine one object. So let me do that. Again, all these indentations that I'm doing with the code, you don't actually need them, but I just find that quite useful. Very easy to read. Now, so I can put statements now that are control everything that you're now seeing rendered on screen. So if I put a rotate statement here, I can rotate it 25 degrees. So you can see that it looks more like a jet engine. Let's just bring it back so the sunlight can hit it more. There you go. Actually, I can show you something else. Those fan blades are still in the dark, but if I come back up to the top here and copy our light source, I can show you something else that you haven't seen before, which is that you can, in fact, have two light sources. Now, our current light source is 10 over to the right, so it's to the right of where the camera is. But let's put this one at minus 10, which will put it over to the left. So we've now got two light sources. And there you go. You can now see the shape's been lit up from two directions, and therefore there'll be two degrees of shadows coming from different directions. There you go. That winds up this sixth of the Povray tutorials. I hope it's enlightened you and that you'll come back to see the next one.